as a profession is slowly coming out of the proverbial shadow and stepping into the arena of substance. I remember the late or rather early 90s, those days when HR was hardly heard of. There was no one who would even talk about professional HR, let alone practice professional HR. But then things have changed a lot and changed for better. And in fact, change is the theme of this HR meet, embracing change, and I like this, this idea. In fact, HR should embrace change because unless you embrace change, you can't make others change. And the number one responsibility of HR, HR profession, HR professionals, HR function, whatever you call it, is to make change happen. And that's happening. So as I said, it has come a long way. It's a matter of real pride. But then I humbly also submit that there's a long way to go. If HR professionals, if HR practitioners, if HR knowledge seekers, they stop where they are at the moment, then we will not see much change happening. Change may happen, but then the change may not be in the direction which is desired, which is expected, and to which we are destined. But if I may humbly submit, what I would like to stress is that for HR at least, and this is true for anyone, for any profession, for any management domain, for any organization, institution, or individual. It's not enough to embrace change. What is also needed, perhaps what is needed more is enriching change. Sometimes I have seen that institutions and people, they embrace change and they stop there. They don't do any serious efforts to enrich the change. So the principle, the idea, the guiding force for the next stage development of HR is to not only embrace change, but to enrich change. And if HR doesn't do it, then who else will? So I would like to call upon all the HR professionals, HR practitioners, HR experts, HR researchers, HR managers, who are assembled in this hall to celebrate you know, this great occasion that let's enrich change. And by enriching change, we can bring about better results. So this was the idea behind recognizing and felicitating those organizations who have excelled in HR practices, in HR policies, in HR programs, and HR results. And also recognizing and felicitating individuals who have taken leadership role in making sure that HR makes it possible to bring about the much needed change in organizations, in community, and in society. So with these few words, I would like to thank the organizers, growth sellers, particularly the research team has been very supportive of the necessary works that were needed for evaluating the HR practices. In fact, we had much difficulty uh, making the final decision because what we found in course of the uh, evaluation process that a large number of organizations, institutions, and individuals have been doing excellent job. And it was a very tough task for us to find who stands out. In fact, if we had the 
privilege and if it was practically feasible we would have awarded this excellence awards to everyone who were listed but then as it is, as it is a common practice you know we have to we had to make a, a kind of painful decision of choosing one organization although we are also equally convinced that other organizations equally deserve it so in this process uh, we are very professionally supported by the research team of growth sellers to whom on behalf of the jury on behalf of my respected colleagues i would like to express my thanks having said this now let me come to uh, the process i will be very brief in taking you through the process of uh, making evaluation evaluation framework uh, standing out the whole idea of recognizing excellence is knowing that someone or something stands out just like this one purpose i don't want to read out the purposes there were basically two purposes recognizing and promoting excellence and then encourage the award awardees to continue with and further strength, strengthen their best practices while inspiring others to create their own best practices for enriched national human capital the responsibility of the awardees is not only to continue doing the best thing they have been doing and reinforcing the best practices but also to inspire others so that others can also do equally well in fact our mission should be to make sure that every organization excels in hr every individual hr professional excels in hr until we get to that stage i think we need to continue recognizing encouraging motivating and inspiring others categories i had uh, our respected madam already said that there, there were two categories institutional excellence under which we uh, have identified six awards national hr excellence award 2022 excellence in hr information and technology excellence in employee experience excellence in learning and development excellence in industrial relations and excellence in employee branding and under individual category just one award excellence in hr leadership award 2022 uh each of the seven award was operationally defined in terms of the fundamental criteria and measures that we looked into and against which we judged the hr related performance of the uh, organizations so national hr excellence awards this is the operational statement uh, then excellence in hr innovation this is the operational statement i don't want to uh, read because i don't want to take longer excellence in employee experience uh, the defining statements excellence in learning and development excellence in industrial relations excellence in employer branding and excellence in hr leadership eligibility for award for institutions a minimum of 10 years of continuous operation as a running entity hr functions organized as a full fledged departmental or a separate structural entity for a minimum of 5 years staffed by a team of hr professional and led by a senior executive and then proper documentation of hr policy and all that and any other criteria deemed necessary by the jury similarly for individual a minimum of 3 years of continuous career as an organizational head in a reputed organization and currently holding that position in some organization and other criteria procedure generation of pool of organization and individuals and this is where the uh, growth sellers team helped us a lot uh, potentially worthy of the awards in each category through formal identification by the research team based on the, their database uh, and i'm pleased to note that uh, hr growth sellers has been maintaining uh, an increasingly rich data database 
about organizations in relation to their HR related uh, practices, policy and all that. And by referring to other criterion related information collected and compiled, then they carried out a survey of those organizations which they had identified as potential organizations by the research team using a structured questionnaire. And then preparation of a profile of each organization and individual, individual nominee by the growth seller team by referring to the applicable criteria. And then we follow two stage screening process, evaluation approach, initial stage, shortlisting of shortlisting for each award by the jury by referring to the list of potential organization against the data the growth seller team had generated. Then final stage, rating of the uh, shortlisted organizations, referring to the criteria and measures. Evaluation criteria for National HR Excellence Award, there were 10 criteria and measures used, out of which eight were enablers. Enablers and two were results related criteria. Enablers means those conditions and those situations or those factors which enabled the effective and excellent performance of HR in organization and result criteria, they were more related to the results uh, produced as a result of the uh, practice of excellent HR uh, processes and policies. For other institutional award, uh, we identified five criteria and measures. Uh, again, 80% weight were given to four enabling factors, enabling criteria, and one, 20% uh, weight to one result criteria. Uh, for individual award also, again, five criteria and measures were identified, 80% weight were given to uh, what, what was given to four enabler, enabling factors and one to result factors. Okay, this is an example. I mean, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, for the National HR Excellence Award, as I said earlier, we, I, we, we, we identified 10 criterion measures. Some of the criterion measures were like this. Strategic positioning of HR in the organization and alignment of HR with corporate business strategy. That was one criterion measure. The next one, professionally designed and fully documented HR strategies, policies, systems, plans, and manuals. Third, the scale of adoption of an investment in innovative HR, innovative HR interventions and cutting edge HR technology, technological platforms, another one recognized and demonstrated national and our industry leadership in HR field. These are just four examples. There were six other criteria and measures. Similarly for uh, individual, uh, okay, for individual also, we uh, identified those five criteria and each criteria was operationally stated, defined. Then rating, rating of uh, design of rating scale covering the selected criterion measures, measurement value for each criterion 10 or 20. In case of uh, uh, National Excellence Award, since there were 10 criterion measures, we gave 10% weight to each criterion, 10 times 10 uh, amounting to 100. And for other categories where we used five criterion measures, we gave 20 